Hello everyone, I am Tommy Stervoki and this video is going to be covering some of my current models I'm working on as well as some future projects and prototypes. And this also marks my reaching of 5,000 subscribers which is something I'm quite surprised to see that over 5,000 people follow my content and provide lots of feedback and input on what I create. Um, and this also Mark's reaching a million views, which is quite something as well for me at least, to have over a few hundred thousand people see my content internationally is quite meaningful to me. Uh, so without further ado, I will start with my preview of some of my upcoming models. So here's one of my current work in progress models. Uh, this will be my last model for this summer as I have college coming up in about a month and a half. Uh, it's a Stritzwagen 103C variant. Uh, it features the same two-speed uh, dual differential steering mechanism that was featured in my IS-7. Uh, I found this mechanism to be rather compact as well as functional for this scale. Uh, it'll perform better in this model because the track base is much shorter and it'll be easier for it to steer. Uh, I also plan to feature a automatic loading mechanism which will be completely newly designed. Uh, as you can see from this large space in the back, I've got quite a bit of area to work with there. Uh, this will have an automatic rammer which will be similar to the actual vehicle's operation of the automatic loader if I can hopefully fit it within that space. Uh, it also features a, it will have a working dozer blade. Right now I just have this sort of mocked up um, as I need to make a couple brickling quarters to get parts for the uh, the applique, like fuel tank armor on the side skirts. Um, so I have to design those and then I also have to complete the superstructure of the model and hopefully I'll manage to fit everything in there but uh, I'm hoping to get at least like an eight round or 10 round magazine capacity, which will be quite higher than my Abrams model or my Sturm Tiger. Uh, so I'm going to show you the hydrodynamic suspension. This was kind of challenging to figure out at first as it's a rather simple mechanic, but to replicate it in Lego form is quite a challenge while preserving the original uh, torsion bar suspension I have in there. But as you can see, it functions. And here you can see the operation of the mechanism. It's rather simple, just a worm gear with some a 3 to 1 reduction on the second, the innermost axle for the swing arm. But, uh, basically, the same mechanism is mirrored up in the front. Uh, hopefully, I'll be able to create a 3D model just to fully show the operation of this in an uh, upcoming video, which hopefully will be released sometime before October. Uh, as with college coming, it's a little bit busy, and I don't know how, how much time I left this summer to finish this. But as you can see, it's relatively complete. At least the hull is. I worked out some, some teething issues with the uh, suspension as it, it was slipping. I will be replacing those light bluish gray dishes with some uh, dark gray ones as the dark bluish gray ones are kind of expensive. Um, but as well I'm using a uh, Trumpeter 135th scale model for reference. Uh, this hasn't been painted yet uh, as I mistakenly did the first color incorrectly. It should be a lot darker. Um, uh, this is the color I'm going to use actually to do the base or the base coat and then I will do the, the quad tone um, camouflage like this. But this has been a good reference model. Um, as you can see on the back, I'll be trying to get the loading ports 
somewhere similarly mounted on this model so you can fit through these loading hatches down here uh, to load ammunition um, and then it will basically have a, a lift mechanism that will go up and then it will feed it into a gun tube and then it will uh, there will be a, a, a bolt that will come back to pull the uh, main sl the sliding portion that will hit the projectile and fire it out the barrel. Otherwise I've been kind of busy this past month. I attempted to build a Bat Chetillon uh, with a couple RC motors I just got, uh, though unfortunately the model was uh, too heavy or the motors just struggled with uh, providing enough power to them, but here's the suspension. I pretty much I've torn them all apart. Uh, it's kind of unfortunate as I basically had completed the model up to the uh, the top of the hull and started working the turret before I realized the issues as I hadn't been testing the model throughout and I should have noticed this earlier but um, here's the suspension it's the same design as that on my Geschultzen wagon uh, it's a sort of interleaving German interleaving road wheel design which has been modified uh, this is more actually like the suspension from my uh, AMX 1375 as it features a interesting sort of half stud offsets but the central portion is interesting as it's completely mirrored across on the vehicle which means it would uh, perform quite nicely over terrain and I wish I could have replicated that but uh, unfortunately it just had some powertrain issues and I reached a point where basically I had to focus on that model as I really wanted to complete that before the end of this summer, so I basically had to abandon this project and uh, put it aside as it was sort of a challenge, you know, just frustrating at some points, just trying to get things to work, and I wasn't completely satisfied with how it looked, but also I've been working on a uh, half-track uh, steering system, this is for either a SDKFZ251 or a SDKFZ9 FAMO um, or also I'm thinking about doing a an M3A1 half track as I saw one of those in real life at a uh, classic car show which is kind of an interesting vehicle as it's basically considered a almost four wheel drive vehicle uh, the tracks are also driven as well as the front wheels uh, but this is rather simple, it just includes a simple two-speed gearbox and then a um, this is where the servo motor would attach for your steering it also connects up, you have like to your front steering up here and right here it's got some rubber parts that basically apply to these disc brakes which basically stalls out one of the sides as you can see it's not driven on that side and on this side it's now driven depending on where the steering is. Like if it's at full steering lock then it will be braked but if it's intermittently placed in there the differential still functions so they both spin. Uh, but it's rather simple on me. If people want I could make instructions for this uh, as it's kinda useful I think because one of the big issues with half tracks is steering and getting everything to sort of function together cohesively. This is another project that I've been working on over the past couple months. Uh, it's an automatic uh, feed system for a disposable belt uh, for Sariel's like T29 shooting mechanism. Uh, basically, these links will break apart. Uh, the biggest issue here has been trying to figure out a uh, rubber part that would interface on the lower side to advance this belt along, and basically, it will hit the firing pin up here and then it'll stop. Um, it's rather straightforward. Uh, I have yet to fully implement it but I've been working on it for a little bit. Um, it's quite interesting as you can be able to fold these up and fit like 20 or 15 rounds in a very small space uh, though given the firepower of that mechanism isn't too... it's for a medium range but it's not uh, incredibly powerful, but I think it'd be interesting to do on, say, like a Bradley or some flak-based uh, half-track or something, though currently with a lot of the projects it's too big for this scale. Uh, though I hope to 
at least get a functioning prototype of it and maybe build instructions for some people that are interested, but it's a rather simple idea, but here I've got the engine from my IS7 tank. It's uh, rather interesting that the V-Bank is about 60 degrees or so, or 80 maybe. So it's uh, completely functional and it also has these clips on the top that make these the cylinder heads captive so they can't come out. Um, oops, well it, did, it just came out, but... Um, as you can see right here, they don't come out if I turn it upside down. That's one of the biggest issues with these small engines. Um, if you want, I could make instructions for this as I think it's rather interesting and it mimics that of a real vehicle. One of the other things I've been working on a lot this summer has been some of my 135th scale models. Um, I've been quite busy with those, so that's why I haven't been building so much with LEGO as I'm currently in a group build where there, basically there's a lot of people building uh, Tiger models, and this is one of my entries I'm making for that. It's a Porsche Tiger, and I'm also working on a Tiger II with a cutaway. Um, as you can see, parts are missing of it, but it's basically to be with uh, the Tiger one I've got up there that I built a year ago. Um, so these will both be together, and I've got more, there's more parts of it right over here, there's like the turret and the engine, and I'm also building a uh, 187 scale big boy. This would be another interesting model to build in Lego as it's got quite a few moving parts along the, the trucks. Um, and I'm also building a E100, um, this will be, uh, I'm going to 3D print a turret for it. At least some parts will be 3D printed. It'll be the Krupp 2 turret, which, as most people may know, the model from World of Tanks features the Mouse 2 or the Krupp turret. Um, uh, let's pull a reference here. I've got a bunch of reference books here that I'm using for LEGO models, but um, these are some of the Panzer Tracks references. Um, as you can see, here's like that's the sort of layout, um, let's see if I can find it, uh, it's right here. This is what I'm using for my reference um, from this book to 3D model it in Fusion 360. Um, but hopefully I'll be able to complete that as well by the end of the summer or uh, as it's sort of work in progress, but amongst other things I'm got a lot I want to work on. Uh, I've also got some reference books for Panther. I'm not sure yet uh, in the future I want to build a model with uh, that's powered by uh, LPE and the Panther this book would be a very good reference as it's got 135th scale parts as well as some um, uh, 110th scale reference parts. Uh, so Hopefully I'll be using this as a reference for that, or I could be using, I'm getting another book coming f with uh, Tiger 1 and Tiger 2, so hopefully I can determine if I'm going to build either a, like a really large, like one-tenth scale Tiger 1 or a Panther. Uh, here, I'll just find a reference for the road wheels. Give me a sec here. But here you can see for reference, this is a one-tenth scale uh, road wheel, and this is a compatible part of the same scale. So given it'd probably be like a one-eleventh or something sort of weird scaling to make this part match up. But um, I've also got for the idler wheel, focus, um, this part fits pretty well there. And then for the sprocket, um, I've got a couple digital designs I'll show you guys that I've been working on for those. Here you can see a couple designs for different sprockets I've been working on. Um, this is uh, some larger scale ones that would be for like the front drive sprocket. Um, it needs to be tweaked um, as I'm not sure yet with the track how everything works and lines up correctly, but um, the geometry is correct for 
any of the larger German tanks. And the sizing is correct as well. So uh, I've also got like a idler wheel I've worked on as well as an even smaller version, but. So in the next couple weeks, um, I'm going to create an updated video for my LDRAW to Blender uh, and basically rendering models as I know a lot more members of the Technic community are using renders to provide more information about their models as it's a really good tool for illustrating a complex drivetrain or gearing that uh, wouldn't be visible from just photos or at least to show illustrate the operation of it um, as basically be unsupported but uh, with in the past few months it's quite a few things have changed there's PBR materials and Blender now features a denoiser tool which basically allows you to take less samples for cycles which allows you to basically make renders much faster for animations and stuff because one of the biggest issues I had in the past um, my computer isn't too powerful and it basically it took me like 60 hours just to render my uh, FT17 video I did uh, last uh, spring um, as basically it's quite taxing uh, to take higher numbers of samples and with that you get better quality so basically it, it allows that. Uh, in the past few uh, months or so I've been working on models and rendering them. Uh, this is one I did. Uh, it was completely designed digitally at college. It's uh, an interdictor class cruiser. Um, also built some Star Wars stuff but I haven't really built anything. This is more of a UCS style model but um, I also, with uh, Stud.io, you can now uh, export models to Sketchfab, which is rather cool, so people can view them. Like, here's an example, it's loading, but um, it allows you to physically view the model uh, on the web. So here you can see it, it's just a standard Chrome uh, on the web. So here you can see it basically, it's not really high quality, but it allows you to do some basic lighting and stuff, as you can see the these parts are kind of not smooth, they're not shaded smooth, so, but, um, yeah, it's quite interesting, at least the, the changes that have happened in the past few months that allow you to do this sort of thing, like, I could share this with people and they can physically view it uh, from their phone or from a computer, but also I've been working on improving my rendering skills, I'm still kind of a uh, noob with Blender, I'd consider myself kind of, I don't know, I'm just sort of experimenting with things and getting to know things from tutorials and stuff, so it's, I don't know, it's, it's a learning process for me, but um, as you can see, these were not done with the denoiser, so if you look up close, like here you can see in the shadows, it's kind of uh, noisy. And with the denoiser, it basically will combine different parts of the data to eliminate that unevenness. Um, but yeah, these are done in 4K. So uh, I've also been working on this is another render I did. Uh, uh, it's someone else built the model, but they wanted a render of it. Uh, I don't know, it's 6,000 pieces, which was quite something to get to work with in Blender. Uh, as it was quite a challenge, but as you can see it turned out for the most part pretty well. This is with the denoiser as I was able to do a much lower amount of samples as you can see in those shadows they're nice and crisp. So uh, but some things I would have changed when I rendered this is I should have textured these parts because the slopes have that sort of roughness texture to them and it would help add realism to the render, but uh, I had a hard enough time just working with this model. Yeah, with my computer it was kind of slow to like just do things in, in 3D, like even just moving stuff around in here is, was kind of slow. Like if I were to hide something like this, it would take like 30 seconds just to re to bring that back up. Um, as you can see up here, it shows you the number of like triangles and stuff. And that was, it was approaching something like 20, 
five million triangles, which is quite a bit. Um, if I had a, de a designated like uh, gaming computer or or something like that, I would be with a d dedicated uh, GPU graphics card. It would work better. Um, but the current state I'm in, I've got college, so I can't really have one of those. As you guys can see, I've got quite a stash of model kits uh, here. These are going to be future reference models for things I want to build as I find they're very good for scaling parts or just seeing things. Uh, my next model is going to be the T35. Uh, I'm going to do it in probably about 1 20th scale um, as I'd like to do some interesting work with the the turrets, have them all controlled by three motors or so, so it'll be like a transmission in the middle. But otherwise, um, maybe build an M10 on the chassis of my uh, Sherman. Uh, but besides that, um, I'm kind of busy with stuff, so it'll be a long process before those will come out. As If you check my website, I've got tons of models I want to build, and there's only so much time that I have with summer and with school and stuff, I won't have as much time and so hope you guys are understanding that I'm very ambitious, but at the same time I have to be very conservative with the amount of models I build due to the time constraints. Well that's the end of the video I guess guys. Um, if anyone has any questions regarding uh, content you'd like to see me produce in the future, say like if you have questions with how I design my models or things that I could answer, um, just post a comment and I'll see if it's something that I could hopefully create a video within the end of the summer um, as I want to inspire people to build models and do things and just give them a basis to build from. So uh, thanks for everyone who has subscribed to my channel and helped me reach this point as it's quite meaningful to every single day see people posting comments and feedback about my models which are means a lot to me um, and I guess bye. Oh, say bye to the camera yes say bye to the kitty no.